Have you ever wondered why some characters stay with you long after you've finished a book? Well, let me tell you. Character arcs explained. You know, it's all about transform your writing with powerful character development, and that's what we're going to go over today and why characters stay with readers long after they have experienced the book is because there's a strong, solid, and cohesive character arc. But why is that important, Thomas? You know, sometimes I think to myself, why do I need this skill as a writer? And I say, understanding characters and their arcs is crucial because they are indeed the backbone of character development and co can profoundly impact the reader's emotional journey. What that basically means and what we will go over today is that a story of things happening is not what connects us as readers to it. An amazing fight scene to start off a book has no emotional weight to it because we haven't created that emotional weight for you, the reader, with the characters. And a character being a thing, like a CEO or a fighter or a wizard, is not the emotional truth. But the arc, the character's arc, where they start their midpoint conflict of that arc, and ultimately the resolution that changes them forever. By the way, they are constantly moving up and down in their development over the course of their arc, uh, slightly changing, changing completely, or not changing at all within different variations of their positions. But an arc will lead them to an inevitable new place. They will be different at the end than they were at the beginning, hopefully. And if they are, then that's where the emotional connection comes from because we we connect with them as they grow. By the way, you could also be a static character. Don't get me wrong. You could start at the beginning and end at uh, be at the end pretty much the same character, but it's still your choices through that arc that develop the emotional connections. But what is a character arc ultimately? Uh, well, a character arc is the transformation uh, or inner journey of a character over the course of a story. This arc maps out the growth, decline, or change in a character from the beginning of, your, of the narrative to its conclusion. Now, before we go into uh, the real-time examples of me creating a character arc, I'd like to give some tips that you can think about while we are going through the actual lessons. So the first of four tips, uh, you know, structuring uh, character arcs. Now, <clears throat> the short of it, you gotta remember, there's a beginning, a middle, and an end. The beginning is the setup, the middle is the conflict, and the end is the resolution. A beginning is really designed to introduce your characters in their ordinary world, highlighting their initial state and any flaws or desires they may have, including their positions. The middle, well, this is where we challenge uh, those positions, those ideals, those flaws. We uh, attack their ordinary world and ultimately create conflicts that disrupt that world that was estab established, often this intensifies as personal dilemmas and pushing them toward critical decision making. And the end will showcase the uh, basically everything that has happened up to then, uh, and it will come to a resolution highlighting how they've changed or what they've learned, or perhaps how they failed to change. <coughs> now, the long of it, if I'm really going to get into it, is. The goal is to introduce that ordinary world by de depicting those characters within their everyday environment before the main action of the story begins. This setting establishes a baseline for their life and personality. We've said it many times, the ordinary world and their everyday life doesn't necessarily have to be they're at an office or they're you know raising their baby as a single father or a mother or maybe it's a happy marriage and they have two kids. Like You can do that. But uh, the ordinary world, their everyday environment could be <clears throat> landing on the beach of Normandy. You know, Saving Private Ryan is a great way to set up the ordinary world because they establish what war they're in. They establish how crazy it is. Uh, but then we jump right to Tom Hanks <clears throat> and his group, and they're doing their thing within this war. And the inciting incident is when they get that letter that says, oh, we got to go save uh, Private Ryan. Um, so... The ordinary world is just where you're going to start your characters as the status quo. And it could be anything. It could, it could literally be like the ship is going down. Like that's how it starts. They're a captain of a ship and the boat, the, literally the first page is the boat 
has a hole and they're trying they're trying to stop the boat from sinking and that's just where we're starting and then uh, maybe uh, from there you know they have to survive and and uh, get back home right okay but that might not be the inciting incident because they might be real capable they might be like oh we got a boat all right the boat's going down all right we got the lifeboat let's just jump on the lifeboat and then the then now uh you know maybe the lifeboat breaks that might be the inciting incident because now like their their ordinary world has changed you're like oh i had you know oh the battery's not working like things like that like anything that disrupts that ordinary world would be an inciting incident anyway uh more importantly you know as as you show the character's initial mindset within the ordinary world and their flaws this could be through their interactions their reactions to small conflicts or their relationships with other characters you know and ultimately you might want to plan some foreshadowing you know for potential growth by subtly revealing the internal or external conflicts that might challenge these initial traits additionally if you're touching on the middle uh, or the conflict you know, these should be uh, directly, uh, any conflict should directly uh, confront the character's flaws, desires, positions, and compel them to make decisions and take actions that drive the plot forward. Um, more importantly, increase the stakes by complicating these challenges, often forcing the character to face uh, uh, tough decisions that test their morals, desires, and capacities and ultimately ensure that these conflicts push the character toward a pivotal decision that will define the trajectory of their development. And ultimately, at the end of a character's arc, you want it to be clear. You want to show how the character has changed, what they've learned, or how they failed to change. This development should be a direct result of how they've navigated their conflicts, their choices. Uh, and ultimately... This is where you would address how the main conflicts introduced in the middle are resolved or have evolved by the end, affecting the character's final state. And uh, by the end, you know, you, you got to offer a reflection or scenes that highlight the character's realization of their own change, cementing the arc's impact on the character and the reader. <clears throat> Number two, understanding arc goals. The short of it. Ensure the character's arc serve the narrative by enhancing themes or driving the plot forward. Align the arc with the overall story structure to maintain coherence and the resonance. Right? Uh, now, the long of it is, uh, you know, again, your whole goal is to serve. You must serve uh, the narrative. Everything you do must serve the narrative or it's just there, right? It becomes fluff or it becomes inconsequential or it's distracting to the main narrative. And this is why you have to make sure that each character's arc contributes to the to and enriches the overall narrative. By the way, they don't have to directly link to the main narrative, but they have to add value to the main narrative. Uh, what does that mean? I guess uh, in summary, I guess uh, in summary, what it means is uh, a direct interaction to a narrative is that you find out information that will help ultimately solve or resolve uh, or maybe leads to the conflict of the main narrative. When it enhances the main narrative, it's just, uh, it, well, no, I shouldn't say just, but it becomes something where the characters learn about themselves in a way that evolves them, but adds value to the narrative. So their growth illuminates something a theme or some of it you know something like that but it's not a direct influence to that narrative their growth doesn't solve the problem it just allows them to be more involved in the main uh plot main main narrative but also uh you know you want to ensure that characters arcs are also well integrated and uh you know have some plot structure to themselves uh, the key developments in their arc should align with major plot points, ensuring the story's flows uh, uh, con cohesively and maintains its pace and tension. Number three. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. Character, consistency, and growth. The short of it, challenge characters in ways that test their beliefs, morals, positions, and force them to confront their weaknesses. Allow characters to react and evolve based on their experiences and interactions within the story. You know, the long of it, 
You want to challenge your characters in ways that directly confront their beliefs, their values, their morals, their positions. Use their reactions to these challenges to reveal depth and complexity in their personality. This is why uh, when you're working on character consistency, you have to allow your characters to evolve in response to their experiences. I'll repeat that. You have to allow your characters to evolve in response to their experiences. Their reactions and decisions should stem naturally from their encounters and the influences of other characters, ensuring that their growth feels earned and believable. Again, allow your characters to evolve in response to their experiences. So the choices they make, the challenges that are presented to them, this is all the things that affect their emotional truths, their inner truths, when they uh, create a new position or moral or whatever the case may be. Because when they are challenged, you're either going to change completely, slightly, or not at all. But even not at all, they're still being in a position, their, cha their challenged position, okay? When a character doesn't change at all, is now a firmer stance on their belief. Again, if we're looking at the midpoint conflict, which reveals the truth of the lie, okay? Uh, and there's a reversal, but they don't believe the truth of the lies reveal. They, they double down on their belief on something. That becomes their static position because it didn't change. But now they have to react emotionally because they believe they are right and that nothing can tell them they are wrong. And that becomes an emotional change. Okay. Number cuatro. Uno más. All right. Uh, okay. Integration with the story. The short of it, characters should influence and be influenced by the story's events, not just passively exist within the narrative. Ensure each character's decisions and changes are justified by their experiences and the story's developments. And you're saying, Tom, but what about the long of it? Well, I'll tell you. Active influence, all right? Characters should actively influence the plot rather than merely experiencing events. Their decisions and development should have tangible impacts on the story's direction and outcomes, as well as from their internal impacts, allowing them to perceive the narrative or the story ahead of them differently. And this is how we justify changes. You want, and, and when you're looking at your character's arc being integrated into the story, basically you want to make sure that the changes in a character's behavior or mindset are well justified by their experience in the stories. The way they are completely changing the, way, the things they believe in to somewhat to not at all. Every significant shift should be grounded in earlier events or interactions providing a logical and satisfying character development. Ooh. All right. Oh, I needed that. I needed that. <clears throat> if you're enjoying this lesson and want more insight on fine-tuning your writing skills, hey, remember to hit that bell icon while subscribing so you don't miss out. <sighs> Please uh, excuse me for my uh, breathing. Uh, I am sick. I am very sick. Um, hopefully, uh, hopefully we figure it out. Uh, yeah, that's not, you're not here for that. You're not here. Who cares? I'm just, if I sound like I'm running out of breath, it's cause I have something's wrong with my lungs right now. All right, let's do it. But don't worry. All right. Don't worry. I'm going to, I'm going to keep making these videos and, uh, until, uh, you know, if I can, I can't, whatever. I'm here for you. Yeah, it's my, it's, uh, I'm contributing something to the world. <laughs> Yay. Uh, I, though I would rather uh, not be sick. Uh, all right. But since I am, you know, I got I to gotta keep myself busy. All right. Let's keep going. All right. Share screen. All right. Let's do it. Oh, God. Whew. I feel like I'm going to faint. All right. What are the stakes? Wait, that's not where we're going. I'm sorry about that. Ha, ha, ha. That's not what I meant. Okay. Summary arcs. All right. Summary arcs. We're going to do this in real time. Hey, look, there it is. Character name here. But Thomas, who is that character? I don't know right now. We're going to do that. We're going to figure that out in real time. And we're going to uh, come up with an arc. Now, 
we're going to come up with, uh, for now, I only have this because um, I made this sheet and I put it into the uh, the folder that everyone can download free stuff by going to the link in the comments below or even the description. Um, but ultimately, I'm going to write out one main arc and then like maybe two or three uh, secondary arcs that we're not going to actually map out, but just so you could see it on the page, okay? So as you can see, this is arcs, ideas, and moments. So another thing I like to do is I might do this, okay? And then I'll have like idea one, idea two, right? Idea, or I might even, I'm sorry. Do, 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 do. Uh. Idea one, okay. All right, and then uh, I might do this, moments. Thomas, what is all that? I don't know. <laughs> all right. Okay, so uh, moment one. So what is what is going on? All this is is like an idea from like, oh, you know, it'd be cool if uh, this character ended up uh, losing their eye. Oh, that's interesting, right? And then a moment might be like... Um, they are at a tavern. Okay, this is epic fantasy, maybe. They are at a tavern, and all they want is potatoes. Potatoes, and there are never any potatoes wherever they go. All right, so this that actually sounds more like an idea. So what I would do is... Um, actually, no, they are at a tavern. That's the moment, okay. Uh, and all he wants is potatoes. There are no potatoes, uh, okay. And um, then one of their friends leaves and comes back uh, at, at the end of the scene with a bag of potatoes that they bought at a local general store and ask the cook to make up some potatoes for this kid, this guy, this person. Okay, there you go. That's a moment. All right. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Sorry about that. Uh, make some potatoes. Asks the cook to cook up some potatoes for this person. Okay. Uh, let's get rid of that. So that's what an idea is. And a moment is actually just kind of working out a moment that would uh, present itself as a scene or a moment within a scene or whatever. The idea is just the concept, you know. In fact, I might say, uh, he always wants potatoes. Or you could say, because uh, again, you don't want to, you might not know what the character is right away. Because remember, we start internally and work our way out to the external. When creating a character, when working on arcs, Unless, unless you've already created the character and you know what that character is and who they are and what they want, and you've already decided that, and now you're working on more of a, uh, a nuanced arc that's different. But if you're going to start with an arc, the, the best way to create an emotionally sound character is starting internally before externally. Uh, for example, this is a want. All right. This will be an external thing. But why do we want them to lose their eye? Well, well, maybe uh, they are a sharp shooter, right? So now they are. What am I doing? They are a sharp shooter. Shooters. Uh, the character is a sharp shooter. All right. So as an idea, this would be external, okay? And this would be, would be an internal. This is a position, okay? This is not interesting. So for me to make this interesting, I have to really think about building up the value of the sharpshooter idea. I have to build up the emotional connection to that. So the idea might be, now I have to build into it. Uh, their father taught them how to shoot an arrow, and it was how they bonded 
over the course of characters training. Uh, once they left for the armies, uh, they said goodbye to their father and mother. And this is one of the things that keeps their father close in their heart. However, once they lose the ability need to shoot an arrow. Arrow. It becomes like they lost a part of their connection to their father's memory. Also, their skill level with the bow was something their father really loved about them. But I'll also write this note. Uh, however, the father just loved that they connected through the bow and arrow. It wasn't really about how good their child was at shooting. Okay. So, by the way, what I just created was a uh, a, a lie, a lie that the character I could actually do this. a lie that the character believes. They believe that being good at the bow is what makes their father proud of them, but it has nothing to do with that because you know they don't understand the internal. So now I just made a thing that is external. I worked on the internal through the idea. Okay, now that I have this idea. Right, I have several ideas. Okay, uh, I could actually use this as an arc develop. Right, so what I could do is uh, arc one. Uh, they are recruited for the army as a sharp shooter. As oh. the character is uh, recruited for the army as a sharpshooter. Now that's just the general. Uh, that's a general arc, right? Uh, but I could say the characters are recruited for the army to fight against. I don't know the invading. Uh, antagonist, right? We'll just make it uh, okay. The person is a sharpshooter, uh, and they are given one person to head out, out with while they uh, settle down and uh, find high, high valued targets. However, this should be high value, high valued targets, or is it one word? High value. High, oh, I guess it's high value targets. Sorry about that. Uh, anyway, so here we go. The characters recruited for the army to fight against the invaded antagonist. The person is a sharpshooter, and they are given one person to head out with while they settle down and find high value targets. Uh, additionally. Uh, there, uh, the end goal and, uh, um, as they go through, uh, their mission in the mid point conflict, they lose their eye. Ha <laughs> ha. All right. So that'll help review because now we can deal with the emotional fallout, which is, oh, I lost my eye. I can't be a sharpshooter. My father, you know, they loved me, and this was the only thing they appreciate. Now I don't have anything, right? Uh, but the arc ends up, uh, they push through and find a way to continue their mission, okay? Uh, using their bad eye, right? Uh, and 
trying to work through their shattered confidence. All right. And uh, they end up getting the high value target. Okay. So this is the arc. Now, by the way, uh, I could I could do it like this. I could just write it. You know, we've done this in the past where I just summarize the arc. That could be uh, we could do that. I was uh, I was letting it look like this just so you could kind of uh, just see it a little clearer in the steps. So now, the, oh, let me uh, let me do another arc. Uh, what's the other one? The potatoes. Okay. Uh, the other arc is uh, uh, there. This person is always in the mood for potatoes, but there are never any where they go right and then uh so we start off uh um well uh in the training camp of uh the uh the army army uh they are last online because of their training going over and they miss out on the potatoes <laughs> okay all right uh at one point they uh get in trouble and have to peel <laughs> uh potatoes um uh, okay making them not like potatoes especially spanish uh once they realize that everyone else got them after they prepared the meals and none were left okay uh now, by the way, this might not end up in the midpoint conflict, like, you know, in the middle of the story, but every arc has a beginning, a middle, and end. And honestly, uh, if I may, uh, honestly, an arc can end in a chapter. You know, like a character arc of a thing could end in a chapter. It could end over two chapters or three chapters. It could end in one plot point it can end over the course of us one section it can end over the course of an arc it can end before the midpoint conflict happens the arc is different than the main plot the main plot of your story that's going to unfold over the 27 plot points of the entire narrative a character arc is going to happen over its own 27 point uh, uh plot point arc uh, that's why we're actually going we're going to end up using the 27 plot points um, just as a way to look at the arc and to make sure that it's a full arc. However, you then go back and you can start now that you have all those beats, you can start implement them in, into the main narrative and that would look different. You know, you might have it might all happen in one act. You never know. Uh, you never know. Anyway. Uh, let's just finish this uh, potato thing. So, um, and while they are out in a tavern, they smell potatoes and they smell so damn good that they end up wishing they could have some. Now we come down here. Of me. It's going to be this scene. But we're not actually going to work on this particular arc. Okay. However, we are going to work on 27 plot point outline, which brings us all the way up to here. Okay. So if we look at the first part, the character. Uh, uh, da, 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 da. Boom. Okay, a uh, character character 
one. Okay. Boop. I would do this. Okay. And maybe I would do this. All right, the characters recruited for the army to fight against the invading agents. So the the story starts off, the narrative starts off literally with them being recruited. So we don't have to worry about all the past stuff. We can kind of implement that within uh, flashbacks or even narrative story. Uh, you know where they talk to their buddy about yeah my father, especially because we have to build up, we have to earn the right to have them emotionally upset that oh my father, this is how we connected. All right. Um. Let's go back down, see what else we got here. What else we got? What else we got? Okay. Uh, the person is a sharpshooter, and they are given one person. Ahead. Okay. <clears throat> do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. So I'm going to make this. That's when the character's pushed into Maybe that's where this goes. And so I don't have to uh, do it over. Because I'm lazy. Oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyway. Do, do, do. I know it looks crazy. I'm gonna go over. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just organizing it first, and then, then, then I'll go over it. Uh, the person is shopping where he, as they go through the mission in a minute, they lose an eye. Son of a bitch! How'd they lose their eye? All right. Pew. So that's gonna be the midpoint conflict. Oh, not this one. The midpoint conflict. Boom, 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 boom. Boop. Okay. Da, 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 da. Let's get the character. Character Why? I guess I could have just wrote that. But I'm lazy. All right. Let's go back down. I'm going to show you this in uh, a little bit better, but uh, just give me one moment. Let me just kind of, they push through and find a way. Okay. Do, 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 do. Do, do. What happened there? Oh, I see. I see. Well, that's interesting. Let's fix that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. There we go. All right. Now, let's... Uh... Do, 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 do. Let's do this. Yeah. They push through and find ways to uh, get through their mission. Okay. All right, so we're not. That's not going to be the immediate reaction. They reflect on the long-term impacts. Uh, they push to problem by creating. Okay. Okay. All right. And uh, they end up getting the high-value target. Uh, I know what you're thinking, Tom. Why there? Shouldn't it be the final battle? No. And the reason is because they end up getting the high value target. And then they have to get out of there and get back, get to a safe place to be uh, taken out of there, right? So this would be. Oh, I could even just write it now. I could, I can put it there now because we're talking about it. So this will be. Uh, by the way, I might write Act One. I mean Arc One. Arc One. Just so I know. Just so I know what arc it is. Because, you know, I might have more than one arc plot point, you know, written down. So, but anyway, uh, they end up getting out. Okay, so they are spotted by the army and now have to fight their 
way out of the main campsite of the enemy. The enemy? Okay. And maybe... uh. All right. Uh, let's say they uh, succeed or fail. Uh, they are outside of the campsite because they broke. They broke free, but now they are being chased by people uh, into neutral territory every great writer has a great editor all right uh and it is here where the final showdown to survive happens uh and ultimately uh their uh associated army arrives uh as backup and helps Save, save them, save them, save them. Uh, and then watch this, watch this. Uh, they arrive home uh, with a medal. By the way, this, this, did I spell that right? I don't think I did, did I? Medal. Oh, that's medial. Medal of honor. Oh, it's just A. Anyway, they they arrive home with a medal for their bravery and accomplishment. And uh, their father sees the patch over the character's eye. And they embrace... And uh, the child tells their father that their bow shooting days are over. Mostly because uh, if if I did write the story, I'd make it where like getting that final target was really hard. Like, you know, like it was just really difficult, you know, and uh, they weren't it's not so it's not something they're co they're confident about anymore you know uh but anyway so uh the child uh, tells their father their bow shooting days are over uh and the father uh smiles and laughs while crying i'm just happy home all right okay Oh, you are. Oh, I'm just happy you're home. You're. You are home. All right. Anyway. So let's uh, let's go all the way to the beginning. So the characters recruited for the army to fight against the invaded. Uh, by the way, if you notice, the arc and the character's emotional truth is coming through. And all I did was a few plot points already. So this is a really comfortable, low stakes we see them being recruited. They walk right in, right? Um, you know, this this might also be, uh, by the way, this is a arc one. And an additional element to that arc is we see them uh, being tested uh, to uh, find their position in the army, et cetera, et cetera, right? Okay. Um, so what does that mean? That means, uh, you know, they end up being assigned to the sharp shooter team. Anyway, before I go any further though, so the emotional truth is revealing itself in the style of the arc. Okay. But as I said, this is a very calm, low stakes thing. However, the stakes are, you know, do they get a do do they get through uh, boot camp or maybe they, I don't even do boot camp. I just we just assume they got through boot camp and like go right to the, you know, where are you going to be in this thing? Right. Uh, obviously, if I was writing it as a plot line, like like a main plot, here's where I'd be like, intro we're introducing the 
the the rowdy crew you know the who's going to be the main characters you know uh before we get into the inciting incident but anyway if we just go down a little bit the person is a sharpshooter and they are given one person uh so now we know so by now i already know they have a friendship with this uh person or it could be the person they don't like it's it, you know we we pit them against somebody they don't like and then they end up being teamed together right and then they grow they grow a, a relationship together so that could be a third arc by the way uh for this character um but anyway uh they are given one and they head out to a high value target so now they have proven uh their value their skill level and they have to go do a very dangerous thing all right and then this is where it really gets starts getting emotional okay uh it might not be like over emotional for you right now because there's no immersion but we can see the emotional thing they lose their eye but here's two things okay let's let's go back let's just think it through as writers this is the easy part and they made it oh what an accomplishment so now their position has changed right but let me tell you how it might have changed they already knew they were going to become sharpshooters so their position doesn't change it's just reinforced therefore they have more confidence or therefore you know they they realize yeah this was always what i was going to be and they double down on that position of course i'm a sharpshooter they might not become arrogant for it or they can it's a writer's choice but there is an emotional truth to it maybe it lets them have a feeling uh they think about their father or whatever the case may be right so even though it's a static change they weren't challenged they were challenged on the position will they won't they and they're oh you will of course you will and they're like oh of course i will my position stays the same i know i'm good at shooting a bow and arrow okay but uh when we get here the same thing happens the person is shot they are given so i like the idea that uh they are paired the character is paired with uh the person they that they don't get along with uh or that i shouldn't say didn't uh didn't get along with during the training and place placement now they are forced to work together okay uh so this challenge is their position what's their position i don't like this person that's a position i don't get along with this person uh whatever it is which would be something we'd figure out I, uh, whatever it is i don't like it so i already know that this is not what i want to deal with i'm not interested uh in this person okay um by the way as you can see uh let's go back down to the all i did for the original arc is I came up with uh, five ideas for it. I could come up with more, right? And then I go, let me place these these ideas into one of the plot points that makes sense. And then it fits within the full narrative of the story. Not only do you start building a, a narrative, uh, but you start building in the emotional. And then you could start filling in the plots like we did, okay? It's very easy. With a lot with a lot of practice anyway all right uh okay so we did that all right now this changes their position because their position was i'm great but this completely changes their position because they went from confident to not confident they lack confidence now and they are one eye short um so now they have to emotionally deal with that and now we're you see how we're creating and by the way if you are a writer and you want to make sure you really understand the way they are challenged and the way they decide to uh agree to that challenge is up to you it could be anything i'm just throwing out ideas and brainstorming in real time but i could i could if i really wanted to be like uh, what is the what is the challenge? Uh, will they, won't they get chose, chosen one? 
All right, chosen to be a sharp shooter. Uh, they believe they are better than good enough to get chosen. Uh, and they are chosen. Therefore, their position stays the same. You can do this. Like, just because you have, if you're a writer that has to write things out and see them and, and make them uh, tangible, like, do it. Don't let anyone, oh, you, why do you got to, like, write out all the little details? I'm not saying to write out every detail, but if you have to, just do it. Whatever's your process to get the story out, just do it. But this is a nice way of just being like, oh, all right, I see how they were challenged. Right? What was the challenge? What is the challenge? Chosen one. Um, wee -oo, wee -oo, wee -oo. So, uh, but that's 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 something to think about is you can mark down where they are challenged, how their position was challenged, and if it changed completely somewhat or not at all. All right. Uh, we talked about this. Okay. And then we look at this and we go, oh, they lost their eye. All right. So now let's kind of like uh, fill in some of the blanks. All right. So the characters recruited for the army to fight against the invaded antagonist. Uh, we see them being tested to find their position in the army, etc., etc. They end up being assigned to the sharpshooter. That's the inciting incident. What is the reaction to that? Mm -mm 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 -mm. The protagonist reacts to that. Uh, they celebrate with the others who have accomplished the same their goals too and then i could be like uh their arrival who ends up being assigned to them okay <clears throat> also is at the location where everyone is celebrating right now, uh, this might be another arc, like I was saying, you know, like their relationship would be a, a different arc, but because I'm here, I'm just going to let my brain just kind of brainstorm. Um, the two get into a fight and are pulled away by an officer and ultimately, uh, forced to both have to do what peel potatoes <laughs> oh how'd you do that tom i don't know i just connected everything so if i go back down here and i'm like act uh arc three is uh the relationship with their rival turned best friends okay there we go that's pretty simple i could work on that later but uh, uh they get in trouble and they realize, uh, well, in training, uh, one uh, last time, that'll be later. At one point, they get in trouble. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Okay. So let's go back up. All right. So since that was the immediate inciting incident, uh, by the way, I, I could do this. I could go, ah, tree. And, uh, okay, so, right now, watch this. All right, now this is going to be, uh, where they reflect, right? Do, 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 do. Let's just do this to make it easy. All right, so first things first, now, because I like to keep things in order, ah, uh, two. Okay, uh, let's see. Boop. How does arc one? Because uh, to me, arc one would be the main, the main, the main storyline for this character, right? So arc one, what is it? They celebrate. Okay, so then they just got into a fight. Ba 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 ba. Uh, there are rumors that they will be discharged from the army. For their behavior. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Now, this is Act 1, though, okay? So, 
Okay. At this point, uh, okay. Uh, both of them are peeling the potatoes, and we learn a little about the rival in this moment to create empathy for the character. Okay, so I, I'm going to put a, uh, I have to think about this later. Okay. And that's the thing. Remember, you don't have to have specific details when you're brainstorming or, or laying out the thing. You just want to have emotional uh, points. Uh, you want to make sure uh, you're hitting certain beats, right? And this is a beat, right? A beat is uh, the protagonist reacts to and reflects on the long-term impacts of the inciting incident. Okay. <clears throat> and I might even write uh, uh, the main protagonist realizes they have something in common but doesn't let it uh come out uh reveal this slowly through the remaining narrative and seed the connection okay again doesn't have to be specific but uh whatever all right, so let's let's move on, okay? Uh, all right, the, the decides to take uh, take action. Uh, the protagonist um, gets ahead of the rumors and presents themselves to the high to the higher off. Officers, uh, and takes full responsibility for what happened. All right. All right. Uh, okay. There we go. Turns out that they are just going to reassign them to... Uh, let's see. Let's make it funny. The latrine. Uh, is that correct? Yeah, latrine. Latrine duty. Duty. <laughs> duty. <laughs> it's a duty. All right. Uh, <clears throat> turns out that uh, the pun punishment. Uh, will be that they are reassigned to latrine duty. All right, so now it gets interesting because you're like, oh, wait, I thought they were going to be uh, the sharpshooter. I thought they got to, you know, we, we know that he, they're out there and they lose their eye. Well, we'll keep, keep paying attention. Okay. All right. I'm not worrying about the other acts, uh, arcs. I'm just, uh, I'm just kind of like getting through this, all right? So what's the immediate consequences? Um, the protagonist wants to leave and packs up and is ready to go. Uh, they leave in the middle of the night, which is a crime to abandon your uh, position. Uh-oh, uh-oh. What's going to happen? What's going to happen? Okay. As a result, uh, they are stopped by fellow friends and are convinced to not leave and come back. All right. They are told to do their duty Suck it up and prove that you deserve to be out there in the battle, the war. By the way, I'm not going to do the whole thing. I'm only going to do the first act. We're almost done with the first act. All right. Now, let's get. What's the twist? Oh, I love twists. I love twists. All right. Uh, there is news 
brought brought to their attention that a high value target target has been identified and they are in a dangerous area that will most likely result in death uh, after the target the target is taken down okay all right so there's news that's brought to their attention okay now uh this is what i would do so that's an important scene for this one for the final for the final plot point of act one because of the twist the protagonist is pushed into the new world this is what happened Ooh, i might actually do this uh there is news brought to the da, 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 da. and then um uh the officers the officer in command command doesn't want to assign this task to just anyone they want the person to uh volunteer because it is most certainly a death mission all right Okay, and what happens? Our protagonist volunteers. <clears throat> All right. Oh, yeah. Okay. So then what I would do is I'd actually take this, okay? Boop. And I'd put this here. And so this, uh, because of the twist, the protagonist is pushed into the new world. So this is... The person is a sharpshooter, and they are given one uh, person to head out and find. Okay. So, obviously, I would, you know, the protagonist. Protagonist uh, is given one person to head out with while they settle down and find the high-value target. Okay? Now, the other thing I would do, find, would be the. This would be arc three comes into play uh the protagonist is paired with the person uh with their rival uh who they don't get don't get along with uh oh i that's right they didn't who they didn't get along with uh, during the training placement uh now they are forced together i'm going to change that a little bit remember brains just because you write it doesn't mean it has to be exactly what it is uh the reason is there are only three people who who know this area because they grew up in the area uh but they but the one who steps forward is the rival because they have a price to settle with the person who is the target there we go all right so that's act one now each of these are creating emotional truths and emotional changes in their positions etc 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 all right and i would just continue to do this but everything that i write down for each specific plot point for that specific arc uh creates a challenge to their position all right so you know this is going to challenge a position of like well actually let's go back a little bit let's go back this right here they're just like i'm better than everybody like i'm a good sharpshooter i don't i shouldn't be doing latrine duty <laughs> Uh, I deserve to be out there on the field making a difference, okay? Even though we all know every every job is makes a difference, right? It's, whatever you do is helping in some way. Uh, but in this case, they're like, I want to be out there helping. Something comes up, uh, and their challenge is position. Their position is challenge. They're like, well, if they don't want me, 
then I don't want to be here. Right? Because they doubled down. Remember, they were like, oh, I got picked because I am good. I know I'm good. So it's changing their emotional behavior to respond negatively to the behavior of not being able to do the thing that not only do they believe is good, but they were chosen originally by the people that just said they, uh, they're they going to be punished for latrine duty. Okay? But their friends are like, don't do it, you know? Just keep doing what you are. You are good. You know, they're going to see you for who you are, and you can just prove yourself. Just This is not a good look. Like, if you leave, then you'll be a criminal. If you stay, yeah, so you're doing latrine duty, but they'll they'll see you sticking it up and don't complain about it. Just accept it and they'll see who you are. They'll see your true character, the character we see, which would be, you know, seated throughout the first act. We'd show the character around their friends and how, why they're friends and why people believe in them. Right. And then finally, uh, their position is challenged again. Okay. Remember they believe they are good. The people that saw them do it, know they're good. Then they were like, well, I know I'm good. Why am I being kicked out? I'm leaving. And then like, all right, I'll stay. And then this opportunity comes, their position is that I am good. And this is my chance to prove that I am good because I know I'm good. And they they could use me. So I'm going to volunteer and prove that I am I am deserving of to be out there. All right? I'm not afraid. So it's still a stagnant choice because it doesn't change completely somewhat. It stays the same. But now it's triple dog dare you. It's triple down. So now there's an emotional confidence of we got this. I'm choosing to do this. That means I have to accomplish it. So now there's tension. They're putting that weight on them because they're like, why would they make me do latrine duty if I'm so good and they think I'm good? Right. Why would they punish me for that? They should punish me for do something else. Maybe, you know, make make me do. do you know, peel the potatoes, whatever, but uh, at least give me the chance to go out there. Well, I have to volunteer, then fine, I'm going to do it. And that that fuels it. So when they do lose their eye and they do lose their confidence, and now it's an interesting week. But anyway, so that's that's how important character arcs are and how mapping them out in the 27 plot point outline is. And again, if we if we scroll down, I just made a couple plot point elements for that arc. And then I inserted them where I thought they fit. I adjusted it where I needed as I created new plot points leading to those elements. I added and adjusted ideas. For example, I created a new arc because of the friendship. Right? I like that idea. I even, even uh, for the other character, the, the best friend, one of their arcs would be uh, the, the price to pay for... Uh, oh, to settle, uh, to, to settle a price against the high value target. High value target. All right, whatever. Okay, so as I'm working on it, I'm coming in, I'm brainstorming, I'm going to create new ideas, and you have to let yourself kind of flow with that and be malleable. Uh, remember, what you think of first doesn't necessarily have to be the thing you end with. It's writing. It's a creative process. It's good to sort of like sometimes when you're you're playing with the clay, right? When you're playing with like molding the clay, right? Sometimes it's okay to just mush it again. Don't be afraid to mush it again. It's all right. It's, a great writer isn't someone that writes the, a, oh, it's perfect. The, everything I thought of perfect. No, a great writer knows that great writing is rewriting. All right. Question. Think of a character whose journey you found particularly impactful. What about their arc resonated with you? Uh, for me, just as a throw it out there example, um, I really love Shawshank Redemption. It's one of my favorite movies, one of my favorite stories. Uh, you know, Tim Robbins' character. You know, that's uh, it's, it's good. I, I'm I'm happy with that arc. Very powerful, even though he seems like he's uh, stagnant. You know. Uh, another character idea, just so you can have an idea, uh, an idea of what I'm talking about, especially when it comes to a popular series, we'll say Game of Thrones, because uh, even though this is a writing, uh, it's still story, right? S screenplays are still stories, and there's still a character arc. So Jamie Lannister, I'm not really a fan of the last two seasons, or even the last season. Uh, I thought it was weird that he just like ran home to anyway. Uh, but his arc is very good for the first five, five seasons. 
maybe six. Anyway, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. Okay, final thoughts. Anyone else? Character arcs are at the heart of any compelling narrative. They offer more than just a series of events or actions. They provide a window into the emotional and psychological journey of the characters. A well-crafted character arc can transform a simple story into a resonant, uh, uh, memorable experience that stays with readers long after they turn the last page. As you develop your characters, think of their arcs as dynamic transformations that reveal their complexities, vulnerabilities, and strengths. Each character's journey should reflect a response to the challenges they face, illustrating how these experiences mold them over the course of the story. Now, you want to ensure that your character arcs are seamlessly integrated into the overall plot. Their transformations should not only be a result of the story or narrative's events, but should also significantly impact the unfolding of the plot. This interdependence all right, between character and plot enriches the story. Remember, narrative is made up of plot and story. Plot is what needs to happen. Story is how it unfolds through the emotional experiences of the characters. And because of this, it helps make it feel like a cohesive and un uh, and unified whole experience. Aim for emotional resonance through the character arcs. The changes and growth your characters undergo should invoke empathy and engagement from the audience, your reader. Whether through triumph, failure, or revelation, the emotional payoff of a character arc should leave a lasting impact, offering insights into human nature and personal growth. And ultimately, through this entire journey, you want to maintain consistency and believability in your character's development because characters should evolve in ways that are consistent with their established traits and the narrative circumstances. This consistency underpins okay, the believability of their actions and decisions, reinforcing the reader's investment in their journey. You want to use the conclusion of one character arc as a stepping stone to, for further development in future stories or as a reflective end that gives closure to the character's journey. This not only satisfies the narrative arc, but also enriches the reader's experience by providing a deeper understanding of the character's long-term evolution. So while you're at it, keep refining your ability to craft effective character arcs with each story, which each plot, and with every narrative you combine the two while you write, you'll gain deeper insight into human behavior and storytelling techniques. So continuously challenge yourself to explore new dimensions of your characters and invocative ways to portray their joinies. Next video in the series, Conflict and Resolution. We will talk about how to craft compelling conflicts and satisfying resolutions that drive the narrative and provide closure. That's what I'm talking about. As always, peace and harmony, truth and action, and... Keep developing the right mindset. I'll see you next time. Love you. Bye.